the Joe Rogan experience. What sharking is, people think of pool shark as being someone who's like really good at pool. That's not what we call sharking. Sharking, for the people that don't know, is like if you were about to shoot and I moved and distracted you on purpose. Like I'll wait until you're right about to, sh to move and I'll drop my cue. Yeah. Or I'll spill a drink. I'll make some noise. Like people do things on purpose to try to distract people. Yep, that happens a lot. That's Especially some bitch. gambling. That's some bitch shit. Yep. Isn't it? Oh, yeah. They try it all the time, too. But it's some bitch shit. When someone does that, that's bitch ass shit. Like, what are you doing? Just play. Oh, there's a lot of moves, even when it comes to pro players, too. Is there, like, what? Uh, I don't I don't really want to mention names. But no, you don't have to mention names. So I was playing the guy uh, a long race last year, and, uh, for example, everybody knows, like, uh, if, you f if you win, uh, so we're playing a race to 100, and every, every day we're playing a race to 33. So I, I ended up winning day one, and I should be the one breaking the balls next day. So uh, I come in, and we're about to begin, and he's like, are we legging again? So I'm like, uh, no, bro, it's my break. So uh, there was a lot of a lot of different moves. Like uh, we, we used to, we agreed to play with one magic rack, and he ended up uh, stealing the magic rack. And then, <laughs> and then we were on a break, and I broke the balls, made four balls on the break, and I had a dead. I was dead out, and he's like, "Are you practicing or what are you doing?" I'm like, "No, we're playing." I just asked you a minute ago, "Are you ready to start?" And he's like, "I didn't say anything." Oh, I was thinking you're, 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 you're practicing. I'm like, no. This bro. is a professional who did this? Yeah. I think you should say his name. Oh, no, no. Everybody <laughs> what does it will... rhyme with? Huh? What does his name rhyme with? Rhyme with? What does it rhyme with? Like, uh, Bogan rhymes with Rogan. Uh, Filler everybody rhymes will, with Diller. Everybody will understand. Yeah. He, he, was, he was a Filipino. So. Oh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> so he was, well, you know, they're probably gambling a lot of money, right? Uh, we played for twenty grand, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a big chunk of money, yeah. Especially yeah, a big for chunk of money, and people get they get a little feisty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, in gambling, do you think that people take drugs when they gamble? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Look at you, like yeah. Yeah. What do you think they play? What do they think they take? Adderall. Mm, uh, amphetamines. Yeah. yeah. Because you can see, if you go to Derby City Classic, you will see people play for two, three days straight without, <laughs> any, without any breaks. That's and, a heart attack special right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. And they play some crazy games. Like These aren't the healthiest people in the world either that are taking this Adderall and staying up for days. Like, they're uh, fucking, they're burning it. Oh, yeah. It's unbelievable. They play some crazy-ass games, like 15-ball bang game where you just, it's an old, it's an old man game where you just, kind of clip the balls and you're just banging balls around for like 50 minutes so and it's a bank game yeah 15 balls yeah but there is a lot of moving part like mm. you just play safety 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 as right lower. until you have a good bank shot yeah and then after 50 minutes of playing safeties you have a bank shot most likely you're going to miss it and then it goes over and over and over and they do it for like days and days <sighs> so adderall's the big one it is a big one uh i'm sure people play on cocaine uh I would think cocaine would be a problem. I've never done cocaine, but for what I understand, it doesn't last that long. No, but they, they're taking breaks. <laughs> and I've seen, one time I've seen the guy was using cocaine instead of uh, the powder for his cue. What? That's an expensive powder right there, yeah. He was putting cocaine on his fingers? Yeah, and then doing like... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cocaine for baby powder oh my god that's insane but he was he was fucked up like completely <laughs> <laughs> was he playing well he was playing decent i mean he's a de decent player i don't know his name but uh he was a uh, just a action junkie well like i said about that book uh buddy hall i think it's uh from rags to riflemen is the name of the book i have a copy of it and it's uh, a very old book and the way it was made it looks like it was self-published. Like the font would be different sizes on different pages. It's a rare book. You can still find it. Like sometimes on AZ Billiards, someone has a copy of it for sale, but it's pretty valuable now. Mm -hmm. But they all played on amphetamines. 
and they would all play for days and days and days, but it fucked a lot of people's lives up. Oh, of course. Because they all got addicted to that stuff. Of course, yeah. I mean, I've played a lot of matches that lasted more than 10 hours, and for me it's it's really, really tough because I never do anything like that. And I drink water, and maybe I'll drink Pepsi if I feel that yeah. I need some energy, some sugar. So, uh, yeah, of course it gives them big advantage in matches like that. Well, there's so many F Filipinos came over here and robbed everybody. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, amazing. And the best version of that is Efren. When uh, Efren first came over here, he had a fake name. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Efren, when he first came over here, God damn it, what was his name? It was like a Spanish name. Oh, see if you can find it. So he played his very first tournament under a fake name because he is god i can't believe i can't remember it generally i can remember it but he played under a fake name because even though it was like the 1980s he assumed that someone had been to the philippines and knew that this guy was the king over yeah. there and then can you find it i'm looking on the efren's just google google efren played under a fake yeah, name. Yeah, Cesar Morales. Cesar Morales. That's it. So that was his name. So he came over here under Cesar Morales and robbed everybody. And then uh, when he came back, he was Efren Reyes. And everybody's like, oh, <laughs> we got fucked. <laughs> there it is. Cesar Morales stuns the field at Reds. <laughs> wow. And this was back when he was playing with a $5 pool cue. <laughs> he oh, he had a pool like cue. Dennis Herco on the left. It does look like him, but I don't think it is, because Dennis is uh, quite a bit older. Yeah, younger. Younger rather than that guy. But that was in Houston. And what year is that? 85. 1985. Yeah, so he came out, stuns the field. He fuck came over here and fucked everybody up. <laughs> they had no idea that he would go on to be the greatest of all time. Wade Crane. Wade Crane was a bad motherfucker. AKA Dave Matlock. Look at all these guys. Yeah, Mike Gugliassi. Wow, interesting. Bobby Hunter, Danny DiLiberto, all those names. Yeah, Wade Crane also had a, a, a fake name. He called himself Billy Johnson. <laughs> yeah, Billy Johnson was Wade Crane's road name. Well, when the internet wasn't around, there was a big thing, I think. Yeah, well, that was his, he would go around playing as Billy Johnson because everybody had heard of Wade Crane. And yeah. so he would just show up places and, you know, and people had no idea, and then he would rob them. It's perfect, yeah. Well, there was a, a great book uh, called Playing Off the Rail. Have you ever heard of that book? Uh-uh. Playing Off the Rail was a book by uh, this guy, David McCumber, who at one point in time was Hunter S. Thompson's editor uh, when he was writing for a newspaper. Um, and we, and uh, they took this guy, Tony Anagoni, who was a, a really good pro, and they went on the road with like thirty-five thousand dollars. So they like, like, like taped the money to his body and shit in some places. And they they did it for a book. And the book is still available. You can still find the book somewhere. It's it's well worth it if you're a pool player, if you're into pool, to get this book because it's really David McCumber is a really good writer. And it's really well written. And Tony Anagoni uh, became a friend of mine. And I actually did commentary with him once on a match back in L.A. back in the day. And uh, I became friends with him and played with him a bunch of times. And uh, tragically, I think about a year and a half or so ago, he took his own life. He jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge. Wow. Yeah, very sad. But in that book, they went to Chelsea Billiards. They went to all these different places where they, they hustled. Mm -hmm. And they just set up matches and set up games and played people. But it just gives you this kind of taste, for, especially because McCumber's such a good writer. It gives you this feeling, this really interested, interesting like uh, depiction of what that life is like. These guys that do things like that, like you know Wade Crane did when he called himself Billy Johnson. Like That is a whole subset of Americana where these guys would travel around, stay in shitty hotels, and gamble. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of the same picture nowadays, too. <laughs> yeah. There's still a lot of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot. It's, it's fucking cool. You know, it's a, it's a really cool part of, like, this subculture 
that people don't know about. And I've always admired people who did it. I always, I always thought that was a cool way to live your life. It's a crazy, reckless, but the people that did it, they were such fucking characters. They were such interesting people. Yeah, I mean, all of them. It's it's a crazy lifestyle. I don't know if I would recommend it to my kids, but... Uh, no. But it's... Uh, I mean, yeah. It Maybe exists. you would... No. If, if pool becomes something really big, you know, if pool does grow to the point where there's million dollar purses. Absolutely, and... but not the gambling side. You know, no, I went, I went no, through, no, I went no, through no. a lot of, a lot of that and uh, it's shady. Did you ever get in a situation where people pulled out guns or people were robbing people? No, but my friend did in the Philippines. What happened? Once. Well, the, he beat the guy out of a small amount of money and uh, the guy didn't want to pay him. And he was he wasn't even like pushing him to pay. He was like hundred bucks, uh, but uh, he was the only foreign in the in the building. And he had a guy with him that took care of him and kind of made games for him. And that guy started saying something in uh, Tagalog and Philippine in uh, their own language. And the guy pulled his gun and like started shooting in the in the air, like trying to say that I'm not playing here. He was like an authority. Uh, or something for a hundred bucks i mean imagine well, what to do for fifty one thousand gambling junkies yeah that's you. the thing it's gambling junkies it's not about the money for him right and there's so many of those guys that are connected to underworld characters there's all these you know wild gamblers that are they're almost all at least one step removed from criminals yeah like, yeah. If they're not criminals themselves, they might have a criminal who's a backer. Yeah, I mean, there's a, a lot of drug money involved, I think, in uh, in gambling. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There was always guys that were backing people back in my day when I was hanging around New York where there were, there were just these guys that were drug addicts or drug dealers. They were selling coke, yeah, and they had that money, and that was how they burned the money. They would come in and, and gamble it. Yeah, do the same thing tomorrow. Yeah, I remember one time we went to Harlem to play this guy um, because these pimps they would have a ton of money and they would play big money one pocket, and so we went down to Harlem, and here I am, this dorky, fresh face. I was your age. I was like, dude, <laughs> hanging, hanging around in Harlem in this like fucking heavy duty, like, like hardcore pool room where these pimps would go and gamble big money. And they'd come in with flashy clothes on. And it was just such a scene, man. <laughs> it was such a scene. It was so cool. It was just so well, just to sit there. I mean, I wasn't playing those guys. I sucked. I, but I was with my friend Johnny and this guy Mount Vernon Tommy, who was like a real top player from the area, and they were all and this guy Juan, who was also a, uh, this killer, and they would we would all go down together. We'd take this drive down together to Harlem, and at the time, the uh, garbage workers were on strike, so all the garbage was stacked outside. So when they would take garbage out to the curb, nobody would throw the garbage out. So there was six foot high piles of garbage that lined the whole street I'm not bullshitting so you'd walk down the sidewalk and rats would be everywhere i mean everywhere you'd see the garbage bags moving they would scramble in front of your feet i'm like oh my god like i grew up in the suburbs of newton massachusetts right that's where i went to high school <laughs> <laughs> in this like very nice, you know, upper middle class neighborhood, yeah. I was fresh faced little cute kid, and I'm wandering around with these degenerate gamblers <laughs> in a, a a pool hall in Harlem filled with pimps. Wow! But I got out of there. I I wouldn't trade those experiences for the world because they were so it was so interesting to see that the subculture of these gamblers and pool players and all they cared about was like who's the killer. Like, who's the guy, you yeah. know? And they all had these crazy names, and everybody had these cool nicknames. Nicknames, yeah. Oh, my God. It was, it was such an amazing time. But it's such... That's what scares me about it is, that, like, I think it's, like, it has... it's. Right now, it's got, like we said, this is a resurgence, but there was a time where I thought this could go away.